Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Find Them Dead by Peter James. One word, she dies. Two words, she lives. So I'm currently reading this at the moment. I'm on page 164, about 540, so I'm going to update you kind of as I go along. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to check through some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating with you at the end. So, Dane reads... A Detective Superintendent Roy Grace novel. After his succumbment to London's Met Police ends, Roy Grace is back in Sussex and right in the middle of a murder case. Five years after the car crash that killed her husband and son, Meg McGellan believes she has her life back together. When she receives a summons for jewellery service, she feels that this will help distract her from constantly worrying about her daughter, Laura, who is travelling overseas. But when she is selected for the trial of a major Brighton drugs overlord, everything changes. Gradually, Grace's investigation draws him into the sinister sphere of influence of the man on trial, a man prepared to order the death of anyone to enable him to walk free. Arriving home late one night, Meg finds a photograph lying on her kitchen table of Laura in Ecuador. Then the phone rings. The caller tells her that if she ever wants to see Laura alive again, all she has to do is make sure the jury says just two words. Not guilty. So, let's go in, see what I tabbed. So we learn about a character called Lucky. Uh, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike? No. What's his name? Mickey, Mickey Star, uh, and they call him Lucky Star, which reminded me of the Asimov Lucky Starbucks, um, Starbucks rather than Starbucks, the coffee chain. Uh, he has a little brother called Mickey who has Down syndrome, and uh, Stewie calls him his homie with an extra chromie, which I thought was quite sweet, and also possibly ableist, I don't know. And uh, Meg, who's the character referred to in the blurb there, she would tell people, I'm a mother of two children and I'm a wife, but my son and my husband are dead. She never found those conversations any easier. Can't really blame her, can you? Something I didn't know here, uh, which is mentioned, which is that sniffer dogs are trained to smell not only drugs, but also cash. That's very cool, didn't know that. And Roy Grace, uh, the main cop in it, he's talking about his vinyl collection, which I have a vinyl collection, so I thought that was kind of cool. So yeah, uh, the, the woman gets summoned to jewellery service and it gets explained, uh, if they have employment, they'd be paid £64.95 per day. Um, and I fear jewellery service because £64.95 per day isn't as much as I get paid so for you know for freelancing and also again that says if they have employment I'm not sure how it applies to the self-employed but I would be getting paid considerably less to do jewellery service than I would if I just did my job and people would be stressing at me saying I still need to do all the work for them and it would just be horrible so I hope I never get called for jewellery service and we get this little uh, message that La uh, Laura and Cassie send to uh, what's her name to uh, Megan Meg they say mum we're actually standing on the equator one foot in the northern hemisphere one in the southern and the water really does go down the plug hole clockwise in the northern and anti-clockwise in the southern we just tried it um which i thought was interesting i have wondered about that and recently i watched a video where cinnamon toast ken was talking about this because uh, he's recently moved to australia with his wife and uh, his family and uh he says people keep asking him whether the toilet goes down the other way and he points out that toilets flush so they they, the toilets just drain in the direction that the water is pushing them down. So it's to do with the manufacture of the toilets and how the toilets are built and not the hemisphere. It is slightly different with water down a plug hole though, apparently. So Bruno, Grace's son, uh, he says, I'm blood type A positive, which mama tells me was a meat eaters group. Now my mother tells me she was wrong. I should be eating vegetarian and vegan. Yeah, well, your old mother was wrong because blood type has nothing to do with diet, mate. There's a reference to uh, Nick, who is the husband who died of the, the woman who's being blackmailed. He had a saying, stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. And another quite great quote, here we go. Who was it? Max Planck, who said, science moves forward one funeral at a time. And there's a reference to Grace's boss, uh, Pew, who is a, a right knobhead. Um, and his wife, Cleo, says, how did Pew ever get to be where he is? Who on earth promoted him in the first place? The Peter Principle, Grace replied. The what? A guy back in the 1960s, I think he was a sociologist called Peter something, came up with a theory that in every organisation, sooner or later people get promoted to their level of incompetence. And that's true, the idea being is they keep getting promotions when they're good at their job, but then as soon as they start being shit at the position they've been promoted to, no more promotions. We get a reference to the quote, if I had to choose between betraying my country and betraying my friend, I'd hope I'd have the courage to betray my country. Another great quote, they say that when a black mamba bites you on the end of your dick, you find out who your true friends are. And so one of the jurors says, do we really need to run into a third week just to hear a bunch more lies? I've got to earn money for my family and for the mortgage, and it's tough enough losing two weeks as it is. Surely we've heard enough. Do we need to hear any more? And this guy's an Uber driver, but again, it goes to show it's pretty easy to lose money 
when you're on jury duty. It kind of sucks. So uh, they're all discussing the case and Harry Singh says, there's a saying we should all be aware of, before you judge any man, first walk 10 miles in his shoes. Isn't that an old Groucho Marx joke, said Pink. Before you judge a man, first walk 10 miles in his shoes. Then you'll be 10 miles away and you'll have his shoes. The streets reference that in a street song as well. Grace says that the definition of a pessimist is an optimist with experience, which I like, because I would consider myself I mean, I'm a pessimistic realist, I think. And we get a reference to the Darwin Awards. It's a spoof award given annually to the person who, by the nature of their stupidity, has contributed the most towards Darwin's theory of natural selection. Mostly they're awarded posthumously for editing themselves out of the gene pool. I used to like the Darwin Awards website. I've actually read a couple of the Darwin Awards books as well. But yes, Find Them Dead by Peter James. It's just another pretty solid Roy Grace book. Um, there's not too much to really differentiate the different books in the series. They're all just pretty good. If you read one and enjoy it, you'll probably like them all. You can read them out of order, so you can read each of them as standalones, but you'll get kind of the backstory of the police and their lives um, if you read them all, all through in order, so it can be worth doing that. But if you spot a copy of this going, I would recommend picking it up. I gave Find Them Dead by Peter James a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Find Them Dead by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.